Shalom Chavim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Earlier today, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Putin sat down for some very serious talks regarding Syria and Lebanon, the entire peace in the region there. But it was at the backdrop of a very interesting place. According to the Prime Minister's office website here in the English language, that backdrop was the Jewish Museum and Tolerance Center. It was also mentioned on the Kremlin's website as well. In fact, their facts are exactly the same. If you look at the Kremlin's uh, website and uh, the Prime Minister's office website, what was put public is both mentioned on both sides there. Also, a new film uh, that Russia is releasing. Uh, both the Prime Minister and the President of Russia sat down to do a screening of this. It's called Sobibor, and it is a film about a Russian Red Army uh, soldier who was also Jewish, captured during the uh, uh, during the Second World War by the Nazis, and be finding out that he was Jewish, was taken to the death camp in Poland, uh, and that was at Sobibor. They actually watched this film. Uh, together in a screening there. It was very interesting before going into their talks about more serious matters. Uh, but just mentioning also as well, Sobibor, the very man that the movie is made about, the Russian Red Army uh, um, the, uh, officer, or not officer, but Rus Russian Red Army uh, prisoner of war there, uh, actually led a rebellion. And of course, uh, I think it's some 600 people escaped the concentration camp. They killed about a dozen Nazi guards uh, in, in their liberation process there. And very interesting, 100, 100 of the people were captured and taken back to the camp, but 600 of them actually escaped there. Well, the, the man that this was made about actually just died this year here in 2018. His name was Arkady uh, Weisspeper, the last known survivor of the Nazi Sobibor death camp, has died in Ukraine. He was 96 years old. The Berlin-based memorial to the murder, murdered Jews of Europe said Monday that the Weisspeper died on January 11th in Kiev. Born in southern Ukraine, Ukraine in 1921, Weisspeper was captured by the Germans while serving in the Soviet army and eventually shipped to the Nazi Sobibor camp and occupied Poland in 1943 because he was Jewish. Kind of a little interesting side note. Kind of going back, though, to the meeting itself, the Haaretz is also reporting that Prime Minister Netanyahu is very firm about the stance that Israel needs to take, and that is, one, they would not tolerate uh, Iranian-based missile factories in Lebanon, as well as the Prime Minister made it clear that he would not accept Iranian bases inside of Syria. President Putin is certainly trying to work with the Prime Minister and making sure that uh, these things can be resolved peacefully and, of course, being the liaison as well for President Bashar al-Assad and his recent threat there about uh, retaliating. I shouldn't say a threat, but more so a retaliation of the Syrian president against Israel for all the attacks that have happened in and around Damascus here in recent months. And, you know, you really have to understand, though, friends, I know there's some people may not like this, but... You know, how much does Syria have to take? I mean, they're being attacked by every country in the region there. The only country that has not attacked them has been Russia. Uh, even Turkey attacks their country, and yet Turkey is supposed to be part of this peace process, but right now carrying on a war inside of the country as well. So, you know, and then Israel. I realize and I understand that Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu is trying to protect Israel from uh, Iran getting weapons into Lebanon. And I do appreciate that. But too many times it has been the Syrian military that's been targeted instead. And it's just kind of, kind of come to a place where President Bashar al-Assad has had enough himself. So is put Putin right in the middle of this, and I think this is probably the half hour or so of the private meeting that was never released to the press between President Putin and Prime Minister Netanyahu probably had a lot to do with these two men right here and whether or not this could end up uh, into an all-out war in the Middle East. And as I mentioned earlier today, and I think some people maybe misunderstood what I'm talking about when I talk about uh, the House of Israel, being that the House of Israel has been dispersed throughout the world. That includes the uh, tribe of Ephraim, all the way through up through the uh, European and even the United States. We have the tribe of Manasseh, which arguably some believe that that's in Europe, but Manasseh is actually, according to Dr. Steve Pigeon, who we had here on Israeli News Live recently, uh, showed us clearly that Manasseh's tribe was actually scattered through Russia. And we see these tribes here. We see Manasseh, Ephraim. Ephraim also consisting or being spoken of as Ephraim, like in Isaiah chapter 9, 
uh, but Ephraim is also uh, inclusive of the house of Israel. My point was, is that the house of Israel today in modern times, most of them are professed believers of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And when we read in Isaiah 17, we find out that God holds Israel responsible for the destruction of Damascus. And he says it's because that Israel was not mindful of her rock. Now, when I look at this, I look at Israel as being the house of Israel in this case here. And not only the house of Israel, but both the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the modern state of Israel. And this is including... The modern state of Israel it includes Russia, it includes the United States. And when I said NATO, that's not to say that the Israel is NATO. That's not my point there. My point is, is that the descendants of the house of Israel that ended up believing the message of Jesus Christ, later forming the different churches of today, not, not everybody in the churches are Jews. That's not the point either. So let's make sure we make that clear. But they have together, collectively, been spread throughout the world. And they're in different denominational systems. They're in the Eastern Orthodox Church. They're in the Western Church. The, uh, they, they're even in the Catholic Church and offshoots of different ones, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, etc. But they influence the politics of their nations. And NATO, who has been destabilizing Syria from the beginning, Russia trying to stop that destabilization, but in turn, still, the countries are being bombed. And, of course, Israel adding their own part, the modern state of Israel, that is. And so, therefore, when God says that you have forgotten the rock of your salvation, that makes me think more along the lines of those that claim to believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. And this is the reason for the fall of Damascus. Don't forget, God says that the fortress of Ephraim as well would fall as a result. Now, I don't know how well we can pull this up on the screen, but I will try to pull it up. I know it's when we're doing this with our uh, portable camera here, it's not as easy as the others there. But let's just quickly go here to Isaiah 17 and just look at this once again. And I'll make it as big as we possibly can. Maybe that way you can see it a little bit better on your screen. Damascus is taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. All right. Uh, the cities of Aurora are forsaken. There shall be flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. And the remnant of Aram or Syria shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. Why? They're going into exile. And it shall come to pass in that day that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. And it shall be as when the harvestmen gather the standing corn, and the reapers the ears with his arm. And yea, it shall be as when uh, one gleaneth ears in the valley of Rephaim. Yet there shall be left there of the gleanings, as the beating of an olive tree, two or three berries in the top outermost part of the bow, four or five in the branches of the fruit tree, and saith the Lord of God of Israel, And that day shall a man regard his maker, and his eye shall look to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not regard the altars the work of his hands, neither shall he look to that which his fingers have made, either Asherim or the sun images. And that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken places. Now we got to, let me go on down. because Here we go, it's actually verse 10 right here. For thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. Therefore thou didst plant plants of pleasantness, and didst set it with slips of a stranger. It's actually an adulterous affair. All right? In that day, did thou, did, uh, day of thy planting, thou didst make it to grow, and in the morning thou didst make thy seed to blossom in a heap of the bows in the day of the grief and desperate pain. An uproar of many peoples that roar like the roaring of the seas and the rushing of nations that rush like a rushing of mighty waters. That's, that's all the nations coming against this little country, Syria. You know, and yet, as I've said over and over and over on here, the mothers of Israel are Syrians, not Lebanese. Anybody tells you they're Lebanese, I mean, that really takes pretty much an idiot to think that the mothers of Syria are from Lebanon when it was very clear that Jacob crossed the Jordan River. He went over Mount Gilead. Gilead is not in Lebanon, friends. 
And when you cross over the, 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 the Jordan River, you were in the land of Assyria. And of course, he goes up to Haran, which is on the eastern side of the Euphrates River, to get Leah and Rachel. Rachel was his heart, but he ended up getting Leah as well. And of course, they're, they're, uh, they're handmaids as well. He bore children to them. Our 12 tribes of Israel are all Syrians. These are the mothers of Israel. And so therefore, as Laban said, making that promise, if you have any other wives other than my daughters, God be a judge between me and you. Now, isn't it interesting how he talks about planting those pleasant slips? And as I said, if you look at this in the Hebrew language there, it's an adulterous uh, affair is what's going on. That planting of the pleasant slips there. And uh, don't have that right here for you here, but that's exactly what it is. Um, and that's exactly what Israel, what the United States, what NATO has all done in conspiring together. And you got together with Rome and brought this huge jihad against a government that was protecting the children of Ephraim, some of the some remnants of Ephraim there in Damascus, the oldest known Christian community in the world. What a shame. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.